Elmo Blatch Films presents... Hmm, not every day you see an educational film about sport gambling, but I'm game. Love the minimalist score. Read the Penguin novelization of Making Books, available wherever books are made. This man is an author. He writes stories. He has just finished writing a story. Well, a slash fic. He thinks many people will like to read it. So, he must have the story made into a book. It's just that easy. Let's see how the book is made. Touch my magic robe. First, the story goes to the printing shop. This workman is a typesetter. He starts the job of preparing the story so it can be printed. He adds punctuation and sex scenes. He types the story on this machine, letter by letter. Hunt. Heck, backspace. Every time the typesetter touches a key, a mold for a letter slides into this box. It's the Bookinator 5000. Many molds together make a line. Every time the lever goes up, melted metal pours over the letter molds inside the machine. Soon the letters will divulge their secrets. When the metal cools off, it hardens and makes a line of words. These are called word lines. It takes many lines like this to make a page. Eh, just double space it and use 18 point font. That's what I do. As the typesetter works on new lines, a man takes the finished lines over to a long table. Where he promptly loses them in a poker game. Here he arranges the lines for each page. He likes to get really creative. All right, let's make some art. This page is to have a picture. The picture takes up the space of many lines. Eh, no one will miss them. The composer then goes to the next page. With a piece of wood, the composer marks the end of each page. When many pages like this are ready, a workman takes them to another part of the printing shop. The bathroom. Then, this workman takes the lines of type for many pages and fits them into a metal frame. He must be careful not to mix them up. Unless it's an Ann Coulter book. Or something by Mark Driscoll or one of those Philosophy of the Simpsons books. Long and short pieces of metal keep the pages apart and fill out the edges. He likes to etch Illuminati symbols into the margins. This key locks the lines and pictures tightly in the frame. Hey, information wants to be free, man. He locks them on all sides. Then he evens all the lines so that none of them will stick up. Then he scratches out all the adverbs for no apparent reason. Then all is locked still tighter so that the lines and pages won't come apart. And it's still easier to edit than a PDF. But the words and lines of type are of soft metal. They would soon wear out in printing. In this shop, they are made into copper. Copper is hard. Dying is easy. Let's watch how this is done. This operator covers the lines and pages with a plate of wax. Then he pushes it into the press. Then he takes a 40-minute union break. Down goes the press. And out comes the wax plate with all the pictures and letters pressed into the soft wax. Now it's ready for market. Try novelty wax books at your next party. Next, another worker dips the wax plate into a large tank which has copper in it. The copper goes into all the places where the letters have pressed into the wax. It forms a solid plate. It has the same letters and same pictures as before but it is much stronger. And the characters are more fleshed out. Many books can be printed from copper plates. Now the plates are cut apart. And thrown away in the E.L. James bin. This sharp saw easily cuts through the hard copper. So many ways to die in this book factory. Each of these small plates has the words and pictures for just one page of the book. No wonder we invented podcasts. Next, the plates go over to the printing press. Here, this workman makes the plates ready for printing on this press. That is why they call him the ready man. 
At least that's what he tells himself. The space where you see him now is called the press bed. Here he sleeps with reporters. 64 pages fit on one bed. These are just a few of the end notes from a Michael Crichton novel. The ready man fits every plate tightly to the bed in the right order. This small innovation has revolutionized the publishing industry. There are two beds on this press, one for each side of the paper. Enough technical mumbo jumbo. How are books made? Both press beds of this printing press must be filled with plates before the printing can begin. Stephen King shows up with an armful of fresh plates. Now, one push of a button and the big press starts. The paper travels around the drums. Seen it. Rollers spread the ink evenly over the plates. Oops, we're out of toner. First, one side of the paper is pressed to one set of plates. Then the other side of the paper to the other set. Oh, I see what you're going for. Sheet after sheet, the printed pages begin to pile up at one end of the press. Now the book is manually spell-checked. This workman now examines the sheets to see if they are nicely and clearly printed. He grades each page for grammar and syntax. There you go. Now let's see what happens to these sheets after they're printed. Are they made into books? Here in the book binding plant, they first come to the folding machine. Each large printed sheet will be folded until it reaches the size of a single page. Smaller for Jack Chick tracks. And the machine goes on, folding and folding, until all the printed sheets have been folded. During this process, the workers enjoy a nice snack. Maybe some delicious beef jerky, maybe a handful of almonds. They're a superfood, you know. This man checks the folders to make sure that the pages follow each other in the right order. Then he posts spoilers on Goodreads. Then all the folders are taken to another part of the bindery. This part is called the gathering room. Nobody really goes in there. These girls stack the folders in piles and put each pile into its proper bin. They stole Disney's ink and paint girls. They see to it that there are always folders in every bin. Yeah, men used to do this job, but they kept eating the pages. Wasn't worth it. This machine gathers the folders in the right order from the first page to the last page of the book. Boring, predictable, derivative, stupid. One by one, the machine gathers all the folders for one book. At the end of this long machine, the folders are coming out. All the pages for the book. The process enters week three. Here, other girls take the assembled folders to other machines. Time to make the Kindle edition and the audiobook. Here, a machine sews them together. Again, each folder goes into the machine separately. Not when Lucy's on the job. This machine sews the folders together with strong thread. The sewing will keep the pages from coming apart. For a month or two. Oh, I gotta get this soundtrack. After the books have been sewed, they go on to the trimming shop. For a fabulous makeover. This machine trims the pages to just the right size with three sharp knives. First with one knife for the long side of the book, then with two knives for the two short sides. Here they also chop out any references to communism or eugenics. But the books are not yet finished. They still need covers. Strong book covers are made from paperboard. First, the paperboard is cut just the right size. They used to cut it the wrong size, but that didn't work out. Beautiful music. Next, Majestic. cloth from this roll is glued over the paperboard. This makes covers that are strong and good looking. Just like your narrator. <laughs> At last, the name of the book is stamped on the cover 
in shining gold letters. Mein Kampf. Or the art of the deal. Take your pick. Now, the covers are ready for the pages of the book to be put inside them. Okay, take it easy. Sheesh. One push, and the book has a cover around it. Another push, and the cover is glued tight. One more push, and it's an Oprah's Book Club selection. Here they go, all finished and ready for shipping to all parts of the world. The story has been made into a book for readers everywhere. And soon it will be made into a movie for lazy morons everywhere. Now I'm going to have this song in my head all day. Okay, goodbye. That is why they call him the ready man.